Hey everybody, it's the 3D Printing Professor and today I'm showing you how I made a teleprompter. Hey everybody, today I want to show you how I made a teleprompter for doing my videos with. And if you don't know what a teleprompter is, let me explain it in a new segment that I would like to call... A teleprompter is really nothing more than a piece of glass placed at a 45 degree angle between the camera and the person doing the presenting. And then a screen of some sort is placed underneath the glass. Now because of the angle of the glass, the camera does not see the reflection of the screen, but the person doing the presenting can. The text on the screen has to be mirrored in reverse so that when the person sees the reflection what they see is straightened out so that they can read it properly and this can be a little bit tricky in addition while the camera can't see the reflection of the screen the angle of the glass means that they will be seeing the reflection of whatever is above the camera especially if it's in a well-lit set so it's best usually to take a teleprompter and enclose it in a box so that it's dark on the camera side and it sees no reflection and only sees through the glass. Now for this particular project, I'm going to use a laser cutter to make the box. I'm also going to use a seven inch HDMI screen. And because this is an HDMI screen, it means that I could potentially hook it directly up to my Windows machine. However, I had a really hard time flipping the screen. Linux has a perfectly good way to do it, which means if I put a Raspberry Pi on this, then all I need to do is find some way to get my scripts from my computer to the Raspberry Pi. And it turns out that with shared folders, it's super easy to do that. And of course, since all I'm doing is displaying text, well, Unix can display text very well. So I think that's gonna be the best solution for me, a Raspberry Pi powered teleprompter. I know it may seem early, but believe it or not, Christmas is just around the corner and I've got a huge project that I need your help to be able to complete in time. You can help raise money for Children's Hospital simply by 3D printing an ornament for a Christmas tree. Check the cards for a video with more information. Just a quick note from the editing desk. I want to show you a couple of ornaments that have been sent in these beautiful ones from Dale. And this is a lithophane of his grandmother, which you can't see, but it's fantastic. And then this one from Bruce that I, this blows me away. It was printed, it looks like it was printed embedded with this piece floating in it, or maybe this piece was added afterwards, but the lines are going this way, which means it was printed standing up. Wow! I, I don't know how you pulled this off, Bruce. This is absolutely amazing. I don't, wow. I would thank you guys very much for your ornaments. I can't wait to put these on the tree. If you have an ornament that you would like to send, I can't wait to see what you might add to this. Looking forward to it, but time is short. So if you're going to send those along, please, as soon as you can. I look forward to seeing it. Now, on to the teleprompter project. Now, I did have a teleprompter before that I was playing with that I had made the box out of cardboard. However, that one didn't work very well. So, with my plan in place, I started work. And the first thing I needed to do was laser cut the box. And I used Inkscape to make the box design. I really, I really like using Inkscape. I mean, again, the price is right for it. And it's really easy to use, surprisingly for me, easy to use. It has a plugin in there called the Make Box, so I just loaded that up and then modified that a little bit with the vector controls. I didn't need a full box, I needed the front of the box to be open, so I just got rid of one side of it. Once I figured out which side was which, got rid of one side of it, and then it makes the little notches in the side just perfect for you and so I modified the notches and put a big hole in the back that the camera can go through. 
works. Now, most of the box is being laser cut out of foam core, but the bottom of the box is being made out of acrylic. That way it's a little bit stiffer and can handle the weight of the camera and everything else in it. Now, the acrylic that I have is bright yellow, which might be a bit of a problem, except for the fact that again, the camera isn't seeing that, it's seeing the reflection above it. So as long as that's black, it doesn't matter what color the acrylic is on the bottom, right? So there we go, we got that all put together. And the next thing I had to do was make the 3D printed parts, which I did by taking the SVG that I created in Inkscape, importing that into Blender, and then folding in the virtual space that SVG around to make the box, and then built the 3D printed parts right onto my virtual box, which I thought was really cool. Now, quick tip, I had to put screw holes in specific places in the acrylic and I wanted to laser cut those holes because when I tried to drill them, I cracked the acrylic. So I had to measure them carefully and put them in. And if you're not 100% sure that you're putting holes in the right place, the best thing to do is to do a test laser cut in cardboard. Cardboard is a laser cutter's best friend because it's cheap, it's nothing, you test it out and if it doesn't work, you make your adjustments and you go with it that way. So that's what I did. And then I laser cut all the parts, I 3D printed the parts and it's time to assemble it all and put it all together. So I had the laser cut parts, I had the 3D printed parts, I had an assortment of screws, I had some felt that's going to go over the back to keep the light out from that direction. And of course I had the seven inch screen and the Raspberry Pi. I am not using glass for this project. I, I am using, instead of glass, I am using a sheet of acrylic. And there are 3D printed parts that you just kind of uh, shove in and then use a screw to hold them in place that I, di I didn't want to make this so rigid. I wanted to make it so that if the glass were thicker or thinner that I could auto adjust on the fly. So instead of making a rigid top and bottom to the part that's holding the glass, I made it a rigid bottom and then tops were just little inserts that I could put in. Got it all together. I had to use some glue to keep the sides of the, the box together, but I didn't glue the top on. The top of this box is, is still, I can remove it. And I did that so that I could easily pull out the glass, clean it, do whatever I needed to do. Once it was all assembled, it was time to start setting up the Raspberry Pi. So I took out my SD card, I downloaded uh, Raspbian Stretch Lite, which is the, the lightest weight version of the Raspberry Pi operating system, installed that on there. I had to edit the config.txt in Windows with the lines specific to controlling this particular HDMI screen with an additional line to flip the screen so that it looks good in reflection. 
Then I plugged that SD card into the Raspberry Pi and booted it up and went through all your regular first time setup, including change your password. Always remember with Raspberry Pi that the default passwords are going to get you. So don't, don't leave it at default. Had to set up the Wi-Fi. Also for this screen, because this screen is so small, I wanted to make the text bigger. And in the process of making it bigger, I could fit less text on the screen, which means that I'm not gonna be using this for anything that I need to put a lot of text on the screen. But if I did, if I, if I kept the text so small, I'd never be able to read it. So this is, this is better. Then I ran a few commands to access a shared folder on my Windows computer. And I put those lines in a script, I used nano to create a script and then modified the permissions of that file to make that script executable. I did that so that just in case, just in case the IP address of my computer drifts a little bit, that I'll be able to just really quickly edit a script and I won't have to retype this line every time or put it in a script in a ETC directory far away where I gotta hunt it down. I just left it in a script in my home drive. It seemed easier to me to do it that way. Now all I need to do is just dump text files in my Windows machine into that shared folder and then display them on the screen with a com Linux command called less. Less is a way of displaying your text on the screen little bits at a time, one line at a time or going up or down. The 3D Printing Professor is supported by you. Viewers like you can support videos like this directly on PayPal and Patreon and make the projects and builds you see possible. To support, find the links wherever links are found. Thank you! Now, of course, I made it look like I got it right on the first try, but that was absolutely not the case. There were several design changes that I had to make, even in Inkscape. The the box plugin, it took me a couple of tries to get it right. For instance, I, I said the size of the box and then it put the notches in, which made the box smaller, which wouldn't make it work with the piece of glass that I had in there. I had to use inside dimensions so that it would do it on the outside of that so that it would work. And I got that wrong the first time and only discovered that after I assembled that first box. And of course, that first box that I assembled, it was entirely foam core, even the bottom part. And that started to fall apart and bend and, and it just couldn't handle the weight of it. And so that's, I learned by trial and error to make that part out of acrylic. And in the process of doing that, I learned that I needed to put the holes in there in the design side. And I learned, like I said, use cardboard for that. Also, the 3D printing parts, the design for them did not go perfectly well because the first time I wanted to do it in Blender 2.8, the new version of Blender that's coming out. I thought, I wanna teach you guys how to use it so I had better get used to it. And yeah, the new interface was a little bit stumbly for me to get around. Then I discovered that most of the plugins aren't upgraded for the new Blender 2.8, which means that all of the plugins that I'm used to using, Bool tools and things like that, they're just not there. They're not available to use. But you know what? I got through it. I persevered. I made it work. And then I tried to export the STL and discovered that STL exporting isn't even available yet. And then I thought, well, okay, fine. I'll take this version and hopefully it's backwards compatible and I can open it up. Nope, nope, not backwards compatible. And so I had to take the design and start all over with it. I iterated this again and again. And one part that I had a problem with was the part that was holding on to the the pole. I originally had made it go almost all the way around with just a V in there and I thought it would flex around and then snap and I could put a bolt in there, but it, it was never, 
I could never get it to flex well enough. And then somebody at the makerspace said, well, why don't you just do it in two parts and then put it on there? Why am I so dumb? Of course, two parts worked great. But then I had to go to the hardware store and get some thumb bolts, uh, some wing bolts. What are those called? Wing nuts that I could put that on with so that it would uh, it would come on and off easily. Those were not, the rest of the bolts that I used, the nuts and the bolts, were just like spare nuts and bolts that I had from whatever job I had been working on in the past. I really did. I've got a spare bucket, and I think that every maker should have a spare bucket of spare screws and nuts and bolts and just you know, screw them into whatever project you're working with. But for that, I needed specific ones. Also, I was originally using glass for this, actual glass. It's really hard to see it in the camera, but there it is, real glass. And this was, I think, contributing to the slump factor of it when it was just sitting there. I think the weight of the glass, and so switching the transparent screen to being acrylic instead of glass, I think helped that a whole lot. Now, I've got a couple of sheets of 11 by 14 glass that I don't know what I'm going to do with. Also, I did lose an entire Raspberry Pi install because the keyboard that I'm using, this is one of the keyboards that I use in that uh, keyboard shootout video that I made. And this is one of them that I was like, eh, this isn't good for a Raspberry Pi. And here I am using it for a Raspberry Pi because as a presenter, it's good. But the problem with this keyboard is it doesn't do uppercase and lowercase letters. It only does lowercase letters which means that when you put a capital letter in your password, like you're supposed to to make a good secure password, this keyboard can't log in. So I had to change my password yet again for that one. But in the end, what do you think? How's it work? Because I've been using this the whole time to do a presentation to you and just quietly in my hand advancing the lines as we go. For behind the scenes information, step by step instructions of the builds featured, and much more, visit 3dpprofessor.com. While the final result is functional, it's not for the tech afraid. It requires some comfort level with using Unix and using command line interface with Unix. It doesn't use a, a fancy software that auto scrolls. I have to push the button every time I want it to scroll. And so I'm trying to do that as discreetly as possible. Plus you've probably already seen, I like to talk with my hands, which means I have to very quietly slide my hand over to advance the keyboard whenever I do that. Hopefully you haven't noticed that. That's it. I've now got a teleprompter so that now I can plan my videos out and hopefully make them just that much better for you. So I hope that that works out great for you. And I want to thank you very much for watching. Big thanks to my Patreon backers who help provide the equipment that I use for this build. You guys make these builds possible and I really appreciate that. And as always, I wanna remind you guys, safety first. See you next time. It's not as f mm. What the heck is in my mouth? I got it.